I'm Dr. Gene Giacomelli, and I'm the director of the Controlled Environment Agriculture Center at the University of Arizona. This behind me is a Lunar Greenhouse Outreach and Teaching Module. It's a very specialized controlled environment that recycles water and air to grow crops continuously with the goal for NASA to produce food for people living and working on other planets, the Moon and Mars. So then, uh, if you were to bring this to uh, to the Moon or to Mars, where would you put it? Well, I mean, how would this be used? What? This is a greenhouse grown in plants as a bioregenerative life support system to provide the oxygen, water, and food. It would be part of a, of a base. It would be the end of the base, for that matter. Um, one of these, about 18 feet long, five and a half meters, is required for each astronaut to provide about half of their food calories on a daily basis, all of their water, and all of their oxygen on a daily basis. So it would be an integral part of the space station. Of, of, mm -hmm. So it would be an integral part of the lunar base or Mars base, allowing all the other room part of the for the science, the living, and the needs for life support systems. So then you're also going to be able to uh, scrub carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere in the in the stations and uh, produce oxygen with this. The plants will scrub the CO2. Oxygen will be produced in a regenerative way. As long as we can have seed to grow new crops after we've harvested and eaten the ones that we've produced, we can then offer long-term solution for life support on that planet. So what are the different plants that you can grow in there? What have you tried? We've grown many plants, most of them NASA quote-unquote type plants. A lot of the lettuces and the small greens and herb type crops, but also the fruiting crops, tomato, cucumber, sweet pepper, even cantaloupe we've grown before, mm -hmm. strawberry, a very popular one. In this extreme environments, the psychological aspects of people living and working in extreme conditions makes it critical that you have high quality food, not just canned, processed, but fresh food that would be, of course, safe and, and, and uh, high quality and good nutrition. All of this is, NASA is interested for space travel, but we have been working for Earth applications for many, many years. And this is just a manifestation for the format that NASA would appreciate, the size, the shape, the weight. But greenhouses throughout the world, and now particularly in the U.S., have become very interesting and valuable for producing food, locally grown food, urban agriculture. We all hear about this now. To have safe, secure, high-quality foods available that are harvested in the morning and eaten in the evening, not having to take a long trip from a farm very far away to get to you. When I uh, get home from a long day in the lab or in the field even, I like to spend a little time in my backyard garden. It kind of seems like this would give some uh, 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 personnel who are on a, a moon or Mars base somewhere where they could even just relax and tend a few plants and de-stress. That's a very good point about how this can make life a lot more green and friendly and, and relaxing to people that are in stressful conditions. Mm -hmm. And extreme stressful conditions are on the Moon and Mars, certainly for our astronauts. Mm -hmm. We have a demonstration of that today here on Earth in the Antarctica uh, South Pole Food Growth Chamber is at the station at the South Pole producing fresh vegetables for those living and working that are sealed in through the winter. So, so you have a version of this in Antarctica right now? At the moment, in Antarctica, there is a 24 square meter version of this, about 240 square feet, produces one salad a day for everybody on the station. Nice. And there's always more than enough volunteers, quote unquote, that want to go in and work on the plants because it's the only place in the station that is warm, that is humid, that has the fragrances from the herbs, and the bright lights, the bright yellow light that mimics the sun to some extent, is a nice alternative to the cold, ultraviolet, 
light of the, the blue light of the fluorescence mm. that are typically in a, in a station situation. Okay, so uh, if you were to grow plants on the moon or Mars, there would be less gravity than there is on the Earth. Um, are there any changes in the plants as a result that uh, you have to take into account if you're to grow uh, food on the moon? <clears throat> the reduced gravity will affect some of the physiological, the natural physiological things that the plant does. Transpiring water, nutrient exchange. Um, but we know that the plant has grown, obviously, 1G on Earth very well for all these years. It has grown and been demonstrated in 0G on the space station. Somewhere in between at 1 -sixth on the moon or 1 -third G on Mars will do fine, we expect. Until we actually do it, well, that remains to be seen. But the design will be such that it will give the plant the best opportunity to succeed as best that it can under the